Did you guys know about the Creature Crate Patreon? Every month you'll get amazing files that you can make, like this Donkey Kong, this dragon, this robot tech scarab, this Cerberus, or this super cool set of Bulbasaurs. You can also sell the prints from these files as an authorized seller. Join the Creature Crate Patreon now. Link is in the description below. Hey guys, what's up? Nico again here. And in this 3D Printed Profits episode, I have with us Brian. Uh, Brian, where are you coming from, man? So from Salt Lake City, Utah. Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, so we're just going to talk to Brian about his business, how he got started, so on and so forth. But before we start, as always, um, all of Brian's links are going to be in the description below if you're on YouTube. And if you're on your favorite podcast player, it's in the show notes down below. Um, few more things. Uh, make sure you guys join us in the 3D Printing Side Hustle Group. The link for that is in the description below where we talk about business um, tips, tricks, advice, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, make sure you guys stay until the very, very end where I'm going to give you your own product idea for your own 3D Printing Side Hustle. So let's start. Brian, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Nico. Glad to be here. So let's start with your background, man. What is it that you do? Because this is still a side hustle, right? This, this is totally a side hustle. All right. So what do you um, do full time? I'm a mechanical engineer and uh, work for a company making medical devices. Okay. So um, the mechanical engineering background, um, I, I bet it helped a lot with 3D printing. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, in college, just learned my first, you know, CAD program, um, a lot of the prototyping and how to, you know, put stuff together and try it out, test it out, and so forth. And you know, all throughout my career, I've done prototypes with SLAs, with FDM. I mean, back in 2007, I think I put together a business case to buy a, a big $20,000 Stratus machine. And so, yeah, it, it, print, printing has been you know, part of my career and this opportunity to do it on my own. It, it's awesome. That's awesome, man. So let's dive into the business here a little bit. Um, what is it exactly that you sell and what do you make? For the business well um i offer you know design services i also um offer um you know create models which i sell online and also those models that i create um print them out and sell them on etsy and kind of right now the thing that's got me interested is you know cosplay props specifically daggers swords um those type of things gotcha and how much are you making a month profit on, on the business? Um, so currently about uh, eight hundred dollars a month. Okay, that's not bad, man. That's eight hundred yeah. tacos. That's eight hundred yeah, cheeseburgers. <laughs> that's specifically the kind of the three D modeling and printing. Um, also do a little bit, you know, the design work. Do a little bit more, and that I probably about six thousand a year, kind of on that type of stuff. That's sweet, man. Um, so for the, on the design side, you're making another $6,000 a year, right? Yeah. Okay. So you're looking at about $1,300 a month. Yeah. That's, that's pretty solid, man. That's hey, they, your mortgage payment, not in California. <laughs> um, not sure not how, in, how much. Not in Utah, Utah either. <laughs> not in Utah either? <laughs> no. All right. So maybe in Alabama or Tennessee. Sure as hell not going to be California. I'll tell you what. Um, so all kidding aside, uh, how did you get your first customers and your first clients um, in your business? How, how did that start? Um, well, I mentioned I'd used them in the past, probably around 2017 when I got my first printer. I bought a TiVo tarantula, built the kit, started printing stuff out. And originally it was just you know, family and friends type of stuff. And, you know, from there, just people said, you should sell this stuff. You should sell this stuff. So about a year ago, I started, yeah, let's put a couple of these models online and start going from there. And then that was doing well. And then the beginning of this year, I said, hey, let, let's try a, a, an Etsy store and see if we can sell some of these prints. And it's just gone from there. Sweet, man. Um, and so when you started getting your first clients and your first customers, 
Uh, what happened next? How did you start growing the business? Um, kind of, well, you know, design wise, um, that's kind of just been word of mouth. Uh, people I'm in contact with, um, a lot of local people. Um, I worked some, with some local dentists and other things. So that was just contacts. As far as modeling and, and printing, um, you know, I started uh, an Instagram um, and started just posting my models saying, hey, this is what I've done. Um, you know, back in 2017, you know, I got the printer to do a Loki helmet for my dog. It's the one sitting up here. It was the first thing I did. You know, we did the foam uh, headband, but I'm like, you know, those horns are going to be bugger to do out of foam. I know an easy way we can do it. Let's get a budget printer and, and start printing it. And, you know, I think I've done about a helmet a year since then from, you know, my Iron Man, uh, daughter wanted you know, Captain Marvel one year. So there's different stuff that interested in and then taking those interests and saying, hey, we can make a, a few bucks off of this. And really, I mean, it pays for the software programs and some of the computers and, and stuff like that to, to support the hobby. And from there, it's gone. That's awesome. Bigger man. and uh, yeah. So, what software are you using to design your stuff? So, I currently use Fusion 360. So, and making money, I, I pay for the you know professional license and not too bad. A lot better than some of the other stuff that I use in industry that are a lot more expensive, but has a lot of the, the so same features. How are you liking use. Fusion 360 for doing the organic modeling? So, um, I mean, my, my head is spinning just thinking about it. <laughs> I, I mean, I grew up in the parametric world and I've done real well. Um, it hasn't been just recently that I started kind of some key spline stuff. I, I definitely need to do more sculpting. Um, I've tried my hand a little bit of uh, Blender and stuff like that, but I think with time, I'll pick up some more of that stuff. I think the, the last thing I did was a, a pommel on the end of a sword. Uh, that had some intricate scroll work and other stuff like that that you some deep spline uh, modeling with. So, Gotcha, gotcha. So with the money that you've made, do you now have a print farm or do you just still have your, your TiVo Tarantula and, and all? What, what machines are you using now? So um, the TiVo is still here. It doesn't run very much. Uh, it's old and worn out. Uh, I've put many hours on that. Uh, but since then, um, I have an LG Mars uh, 2 Pro out in the garage because that stuff stinks. Take care of it, handle it out there. And then from there, um, about two years ago, um, bought a Sunlu S8. And I've got over 110 days of continuous print time on that machine. And just recently kind of upgraded uh, to a Delta FL Sun, and then about a week ago, just due to some couldn't keep up with orders, um, a new another Sun machine, the S9 Plus. Gotcha. And are, are they pretty big um, build volume for for what you're printing? Because you're printing props, and, and so I can imagine how big your machines are. Yeah. So I mean, um, they're the bigger format, 310 by 310 by 400 on the two um, Sun Moon machines. And then the Delta, a little bit smaller, you know, 260 circumference or diameter by 330 height. But the speed that I can print long, skinny, tall stuff like the swords and other things, it's just awesome. Gotcha. So the Deltas can print those a lot faster than in, you know, the Cartesian yeah. size, right? I, I do them about half the time. Half? That's pretty fast. Um, and so, and what filament are you using? Um. Right now, I'm using quite a bit of just the Sunlu filament, PLA, PLA Plus. Um, I've used a couple other brands in the past, but right now that's working for me. Gotcha. And what struggles did you have when you first started uh, the business? Um, you know, at, at first it's slow. Um, there's ups and downs, especially with props. You know, make a prop movie comes out, it's popular, sell a few things, but there's always a wave and it tapers off. So you gotta know when to say, okay, I've got to make something new, come up with something new. Um, then it's just being, being patient. Um, 
and also you know kind of got to watch what what's out there um the model business you know there's always somebody new coming up and they're going to undercut you on price or other things so you got to change it up or tweak it make it a little bit different make it stand out so gotcha gotcha um and so how else does a business make money now you said you have design services right and you have do uh -huh. you have print services as well i do yep and so if someone I can come to you and say hey can you make me this and can you you know prototype this do you do prototyping um i offer those services i mean i have a, a website that offers those um i don't get a lot of you know inquiries on that stuff but that is i do more a lot of prototyping with local businesses that i work with and stuff like that um a lot of the other stuff is somebody wants something that they can't see so you know do a custom design and then print it out and sweet man share it with them um so you have design services you have your own etsy shop you have print services. So you basically have the trifecta of, of the 3D printing um, money-making kind of delta there. Yep. Um, so you said you have your own website, right? I do. And, and what platform are you using for that? Um, it's Weebly. Weebly? So just a okay. free website. Um, can they? Can people make purchases on Weebly? Nope. That just, just direct like some... contact form. Yeah, contact. Yeah. yeah. And then you have your portfolio and stuff up there as well? Sweet Different man, models and, then, and a gallery where you sell all the props and and your little tiny little trinkets. Yeah, gotcha. How how much of the business um, does Etsy make up? Um, right now it's probably eighty percent. Eighty percent. Okay, that's pretty healthy. Yeah, and that's after Etsy fees and and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, um all that earnings and stuff that's that's net not uh not the revenue and all the fees that come out because yeah you, got, you have to account for that you know gotcha. you gotta account for gotcha. the transactions the you know advertise or you know if most recently you know model got popular and the site they started posting it and then they take their additional 15 percent. so that's you got to watch out and keep an eye yeah, on yeah. your your margins you are good tried, enough to absorb that have you tried um any other ways of, of increasing sales like Etsy ads, Facebook ads, you know, so on and so forth? No, at this point, um, I just organically, you know, with my posts and, and things, and it's done well so far. Um, haven't seen the need to um, at, at this point. So, Gotcha. And what, what else is working today in terms of marketing? Are you, are you out aggressively getting this out there? Or is it kind of like, hey, it's a hobby that makes, you know, pretty decent money. I'll post it on Facebook and we'll see where, where it goes. Um, probably the most active is on Instagram. Um, been doing, uh, you know, quite a few reels that are popular, get a lot of people, uh, you know, in front of their eyes. There's not as much click through on that, but uh, it helps, you know, grow with uh, followers and other things. So. And where, how many followers do you have on Instagram now? Um, I think about 370. So it's not a whole lot, but it hey, drives about 10% of my traffic to Etsy. That's uh, significant for only, for only 370 for that much business to come out of it. That's pretty damn impressive. And yeah, I think it'll grow over time, but, uh, I agree. I agree. So I, th I think you should put, you know, a, a lot of, um, more effort into it because that's where a lot of the sales are coming from. Right. And are, are you tracking, um, are you tracking how they're finding you and that's how you know that it's from Instagram? Um, yeah. So on Etsy, they tell you what portion comes from outside source, what comes from stuff that I direct that way. Gotcha. My links and other things. So yeah. So Etsy has those analytics. Yep. Sweet man. Dude, that's awesome. Um, so Honestly, Brian, that's that's it for me. Um, let's wrap this up with your number one tip for anyone who wants to start their own 3D printing business. Um, I think the biggest thing is just be vigilant, uh, watch what's out there, and you know, look at how you can set yourself apart. Um, like recently, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of lightning bolts, popular with a, a current movie. But the next thing is, you know, there's a lot of competition now since the movie came out. I've taken and, and tweaked that, that I can take it, the internal cavity, 
I can put LED lights and flashing effects inside of it and, and make it stand out and different from what else is, is out there on the market. There you go. You got to take something, you got to change it so that it's either different or better than the competition. Because you got to give them a reason. Why should I buy yours over that person's when it's the same exact product? Yeah, and don't don't chase the low uh, price war type stuff. I mean, you, gotcha. you just burn yourself out too fast. So. I agree, man. I agree. All right, you guys. So um, that's it for my questions with Brian. And I told you guys, if you, stay, if you stay till the very, very end of the podcast or the interview, I will give you your own product idea for your own 3D printing business. And today's product idea are ear cuffs. Like they're not earrings. They're these cuffs that you put in your ear. You guys, listen, these things are like the new hotness, I guess, right? And women are eating this up. So what you want to do is you're going to get a nice design or a cool design of an ear cuff. First of all, go look what an ear cuff is and how it attaches to the person's ear, so on and so forth. And then, you know, make a cool design. Like there's so many things that you guys can do with just that one product. If all your stuff is just ear cuffs, and then you would 3D print and sell them. It takes literal sense to make these, even with resin. And then, you know, paint them, put maybe an actual jewel in it, right? And then there you go, all right? So that is it for me. Again, Brian, thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it, man. Um, hey, thanks for having me on. For sure, dude. I'll, I'll check on you in about a year, and I'll see how, see how the business has grown. All right, sounds good. Later, man.